Introducing the Sweet Search Web Research Tutorial. The first part of this presentation will give background and the basis of the tutorial, and then we'll talk specifically about it at the end. Contact mark.moran at dulcineamedia.com with any questions. We all knew one kid like this. We all know a lot of kids like this. These digital natives, are they experts at finding information online and evaluating it and using it? Far from it. The co-authors of Born Digital said that they are extraordinarily sophisticated and strangely narrow. 2008, some researchers in the Netherlands spent a year teaching information literacy schools, skills to fifth graders and yet observed their habits after the course was over and said that the students still relied entirely on Google and never questioned the reliability of the websites they accessed. Researchers studying high school students found that even when they found a good source, they didn't recognize it, instead launched a new search. They had a high level of browsing that came at the expense of thinking about the information they need, planning, and evaluating the information obtained. 2010, researchers at Northwestern University said that students uh, gave a lot of the right answers to a survey and yet when observed actually doing research showed that they had a high level of faith in their search engines and they did not feel the need to verify who authored pages or what their qualifications may be. In Illinois, a study of 600 students came to similar conclusions. All of the students reported relying heavily on Google's first few results, yet not one student out of 600 could explain how Google returns those results, and the word magic came up a lot. Dulcinea Amida did its own study in 2010 of middle school and high school students in New York State. We asked them how they begin their research. About half the middle school students said they type a question that obviously came from their homework assignment sheet. We asked them if a search doesn't give them good results, what do they do next? They told us they think real hard. They focus on the encyclopedia. Or they punch the screen. Just kidding. LOL. We asked them how do they know if an online article is a good source to use? They said, well, if it has the information I need, then it's good for me. If it sounds good, I know it's right, and it has good vocab. The honest answer was, I don't know, I just go with it. We asked them how often they check the author of an article. Two-thirds said rarely or never, because as one explained, it doesn't really matter who wrote it. We asked them if they check the date content was written or last updated. Once again, two-thirds said rarely or never because they can't find it. In conclusion, they don't know how to form a sound search query. Students don't have a strategy of dealing with poor results. They can't articulate how they know content is credible and they don't check the author or the date. They are lost. Jeffrey Nunberg, a professor of information at Cal Berkeley, says the millions, which really should be billions, spent every year to wire schools and universities is of little use unless students know how to find good information from the oceans of sludge on the web. Uh, the Northwestern study, the researchers concluded that teaching these skills effectively could play an important role in achieving an informed internet citizenry. Improving internet skills has to start with educators. As Colette Casanelli says, students need to see educators modeling an effective research process and learn from it. There are students that have support from teachers and are learning to thrive in complex digital information environments. As John Palfrey, the co-director of Berkman Center and co-author of Born Digital says, students need parents, teachers, librarians, and friends to play a role in teaching them these skills. Yet emerging research, according to Barbara Combs, studying for her PhD at Edith Cowan University in Australia, indicates that many teachers do not have the necessary skills to navigate the internet. The University College of London did a research review of studies mostly in the US. It said that students with access to teachers and librarians teaching web research skills in high school take the prize of better grades in college. Those that don't show up at college beyond hope with an ingrained coping behavior. They have learned to get by with Google. 
There's no quick fix here. You can't teach these skills in a week, a semester, or even a year. You can't put it all in the librarians. They have to, these skills must be reinforced by classroom teachers. As Jeffrey Nunberg said, leaving information literacy to librarians alone suggests a failure to understand the scope of the problem. Barbara Combs in her PhD research said we need to break the culture of use seen in this generation of users. Existing tutorials are lacking. The Big Six model was written more than 20 years ago, retrofitted for the internet. The student version is not written for the way students learn today. A new approach is needed. You must teach broad concepts and strategies that will endure forever, not specific tools that will may disappear in a few years. Uh, the Northwestern researchers pointed out the importance of looking at the whole process of information seeking and content evaluation. A librarian at Seton Hall University warns, unless you show a payoff to students for researching properly, they aren't going to do it. So what the web needs is a research tutorial created for the web that brings teachers along, examines the whole process, offers students the practical payoff they demand, and engages them. The Sweet Search Web Research Tutorial is an ebook with 16 chapters. Each includes instructions, summaries, videos, links, quizzes. We have some posters and glossaries. It's based on a study of students' web research skills, such as the ones we just showed you, as well as studies of the habits of skilled and experienced web researchers, including from our own team at uh, Dulcinea Media. We include a version for educators specifically to teach them critical online information skills and how to teach them. For the students, we have videos and other visual elements that engage them and practical examples and analogies that demonstrate the payoff they need. It's a subscription fee, about $1.25 a year per student. It includes all versions. There's a significant greater than 50% early adopter discount. Here's the table of contents. We start very basic. How does a skill researcher behave? How does the internet and search engines work? Students need that fundamental understanding before moving on. How to plan for their search, use all of their resources, websites, search engines, databases. How to use special search functions, how to dig deep and use tools to do so. Keep track of their search terms so they don't get lost in a futile loop. Finding primary sources, which are the real buried treasures on the web, and how to tell if they're looking at a counterfeit page. The basics of evaluation, who wrote this, why they write it, when did they write it. We tie it all together in thinking critically. We teach them how to synthesize many resources into one and avoid plagiarism while doing so. The educator version will be previewed at ISTE, released in mid-July. We have student versions for younger and older coming in August, Spanish language in September, and a really innovative digital citizenship unit in the fall. Here are the works we cite throughout, and here are the photo credits.